Uh, how you doing? As you can see, I'm having a busy day today. Today is a, a bit of a break from working on the trailer, so I thought uh, I have a couple of hides that I had been working on tanning, and one bare hide that uh, is ready to be softened and so on. And softening the hide, working it back and forth to get it nice and supple, uh, as you can see, is one of the most difficult things you have to do. And, uh, you know, it's very strenuous. It's, it's a lot of physical labor. So that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, we'll just have a look and see how it's doing. Come on out. Oh, yeah, nice. That's doing pretty good. I'll tell you, I'm working up a sweat with this. I guess I better keep at it for a while. So, in all seriousness, um, th the working of a hide to make it soft is a very tedious job. And, uh, you know, you can spend a lot of time just there rubbing it back and forth over a, a rail or whatever just to get it to, to sort of get supple again. So I got the bright idea, I went to one of the second-hand stores there one time, about maybe two years ago, and uh, I was wandering around, and they had this old dryer in there, it looked a little nicer than this one when it was there. Uh, worked perfectly, there was absolutely nothing wrong with it, and I got it for $20. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take that, and I brought it home. Now, when you're drying hides, you don't want to dry them out, you want them to just air dry, basically, slowly. Um, but with the movement to keep them soft. So I disconnected the wiring on the back, um, disconnected the heater, and I've rerouted it so that it only runs the motor. And I ran just, I've, I've retraced it to a, or not retraced, but I've replaced uh, the, the plug on it to just a straight 110 plug. And uh, so now, now none of the controls in the top work um, because they were part of the, there was a circuit board in there that I didn't want to mess with. So I just wired direct to the motor, which is 110, eliminated any heat source that was in there, and this is what I have. And in here I've got a deer hide. A little bit of sunlight. So that deer hide's soaking in there, in this salt solution, and I'm going to let that soak uh, overnight. It's been in there since this morning, so that's, uh, uh, I don't know, it's about 6 o'clock in the evening now, so it's been in there since this morning. Actually, it's probably closer to 7 o'clock, but at any rate, um, that's going to be in there uh, in the morning. I'll take it out, rinse it. Um, this particular hide, I'm going to keep the, the, high, the hair on. So that's why I'm using the salt. For those of you who are interested in doing some of this tanning, and just, you know, sometimes you just have a disability or an age thing, like me, uh, or just too much work, too much, too much work to get it all cleaned up. So, oh, the whole herd's coming. That's bad. <laughs> Dogs. Uh, this is a little trick that cheats, but uh, does a heck of a job.
I might want to mention that uh, if you live in a small community, small properties, you've got you know neighbors, this forest you see out behind here it goes to the North Pole. Like there's nothing up there but Santa Claus. There's a very few old, more or less disused logging roads that go up maybe 80 kilometers, uh, maybe a bit more. Most of which aren't even used anymore. You can still access them, but they're not under regular use. But there's no buildings, no houses, no communities. Uh, right up to the top of the world there. Uh, barring perhaps a small settlement of natives that move around a bit. But essentially there's no permanent residence anywhere north of me here. So, as I was starting to say, if you have a small property and... Uh, you want to do this as you can see that rakes up real easy with just a garden rake but you know if you have a little property and you're close close together you might want to evaluate how much you like your neighbors uh, before you blow this stuff all over the place and so now that we've got most of the hair off uh, originally I had just soaked it in plain water for two days that helps loosen the hair up I could have soaked it a bit longer or put a bit of lye in the water uh, I don't know why I didn't do but anyways what I have here is some warm water with I got some cold water in here it's about you know that full I have warm water in here with some bleach and some Dawn detergent and we're just gonna put that in there we're gonna put the hide back in it and we're gonna leave them in there probably for another couple days the bleach and the uh, will help keep any uh, bacteria from growing or kill whatever's might be already there. The detergent will help degrease any of the natural fats and so on that are in the hide or maybe some that are, might still be on the surface, although I can't imagine that would be much. And by leaving it for another couple of days, any last bits of hair that are still stuck on the edges there uh, will come off. You can pick it off with your fingers usually. Here's the next phase of, uh, <clears throat> in this particular case, making leather. Most of the hair has been scraped off. This is a moose hide. Uh, it's not a whole moose hide, but uh, probably two-thirds of it, maybe. So it's, uh, it's been de-haired for the most part. And I'm allowing it to dry here so that I can scrape it again. It hasn't been preserved yet, so once it's dried out a little bit, it's just starting to get fairly heavy um, texture and uh, I'll finish scraping it just give you an idea here of yeah it's still fairly soft it'll dry out a little bit more I'll finish scraping it getting all the hair off and uh, and it'll be probably as hard as a piece of plywood by then so then we'll re-soak it and uh, scrub it and make sure we'll scrub it with uh, Dawn dish detergent to get any greasiness off of it from uh, any fats that might be left on even though we've cleaned it fairly thoroughly and once that's done uh, we'll soften it back up with some water just enough to get it back to about this point where it's still flexible but but starting to stiffen slightly and we'll start applying the tanning solution so much to do on the homestead and as soon as they lift the fire ban I have uh, five kilos uh, about 12 pounds of uh, honeycomb from the beehives that need to be melted down and and filtered through to make a nice beeswax for whatever candles um, I use it to to uh, recoat my canvas equipment uh, for my wax canvas my that bag that I made and so on